Welcome to Uptown Rumble, heavy music in the Bronx. My name is Stephen Payne, director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is April 8th, 2024, and very happy to be here for an oral history with uh, a member of Critical Mass. Um, Mark, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, uh, Mark Scanlon, a uh, drummer, all percussion instruments, uh, drummer for Critical Mass and other bands Great. from the Bronx. In the Bronx, still. Thank you, Mark. Um, really looking forward to hearing all about your musical history and your journey with music. And before we get into that, though, let's take it back for a little bit. And why don't you share whatever you know about your family history and background, how they end up in the Bronx. Born here, and uh, mother's Italian, father's Irish. Um, Nothing special about that, you know? Pretty common. Yeah. Uh, Did either of them share? It? Were, were, they, were they the first ones in the Bronx, or were their parents or grandparents no, their, in the Bronx? No, their parents were here okay, also. Okay. Yeah. I see, I see. Um, nothing special about yeah, coming over, you know, sure. or with an accent or anything like that. Sure, sure, know, sure. Family just seemed normal, uh, like they never was out of the United States. Yeah, sure. And do you know how your parents met? Um, kids, you know, at a bowling alley. Oh, wow, okay. From what here, I know. Here in the Bronx, probably. Yeah, yep. Yeah. No, there used to be a yeah, lot of kids in a bowling alley and uh, change numbers, a few dates. And uh, from there, you know, father went in the army, mother stayed home, but traveled around, lived on the base. Wow. Uh, I got one brother born in Kentucky because oh, of that. Yeah. And then um, they tried some businesses, you know, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I was there. Yeah. And uh, finally come back here and um, lived Cottington Avenue and uh, Morris Park area. Sure. And um, he worked for the post office. Wow. Uh, it was a good job. You know, back then, during the 70s, with the inflation. And uh, she didn't really work yet, you know. I see. And then she became a secretary. I see. And uh, all in the city. Yeah. And uh, didn't have a lot of money. Sure. And uh, as a kid, I wanted to uh, find out what I'm going to do in life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I doctor, you know, whatever you're going to, you know, be. And uh, I was pretty close to this guy playing the drums, good drummer. And, um, and the hair stood up on my arms. So that feels good, you know. I'm going to do that. I had the chance because of the New York City public school system. Yeah, sure. I was going to the same school. You had to have, uh, be in a certain class, yeah. you know, the higher classes. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to have the music oh, on your program. I see. Like three, the three point ones. Yeah, you had to be uh, IGC, oh, uh, see, SPE, see, see. things like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. See. Which I'm happy I was. Yeah. And then uh, when I went in there, I had to pick the drums, and I didn't know how to play yet. Yeah. And uh, I started banging on a pad, uh, taking lessons. Very boring. Big drumsticks. Uh, reading music. Very boring. Yeah. I had a, uh, my big brother had some guy come over. I got a drum set before Christmas, you know, from the Sears catalog. Yeah. Great drum set. Played it, played it, played it, played it, played it, played it. Uh, it's not a hard instrument to play. Sure. But to keep playing it is hard because it's noisy and it's expensive. Things break. Everything broke. Bass pedal broke. <laughs> a big part of the drum set, the bass pedal, is, and yeah. uh, the cheap bass pedal broke, and they didn't buy me a, a good one, a sure. new one, and, um, and they got divorced, and uh, I still had to play, I still was in school, I still had that job in school, Sure. so um, like I had to pull rabbits out of hats, I had to copy people, Yeah. I had to shoot from the hip, and um, after that, I was listening to the radio throughout the 80s, because this all started in 1979. Okay. What what uh, elementary school was it? PS72. PS72. I see. Yeah, Throughout Neck. 
And then uh, uh, IS-192, Ben nice. Frog's neck. So still Great there. music teacher there, Mr. Uh -huh. Morris, our art guy. And then I went to Lehman. Well, there was no band, or I wasn't going to be in any band there. Yeah. My life was uh, mayhem. You know, uh, I it was see. just mayhem. I, see, I was a juvenile delinquent by then. Sure. And I didn't care. It just came natural. Sure, sure. And um, as I was going to say, I could play anything I heard on the radio. Wow. Anything. So I said, why play? Yeah. Why bother? Why should I bother playing if I could play that? Yeah. You know, the drop of a dime. That's right. And uh, life went on. But when I got laid off, I was a truck driver, I got laid off. I had plans. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't count on anybody. So I said, let me, let me play the drums again. Let me uh, be responsible for my own failures. How old were you when you got laid off from a truck driver job? 21. I see. 22. I see. So you were doing it for a few years. Then yeah. Got laid off. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the union job. I see. Very uh, sketchy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, the thing about it was the equipment that I bought was professional. I see. And uh, I had an American Express card that I bought a drum set with. Coming to mail. Yeah, sure. I didn't have a bank account. Yeah, sure. And uh, it was a 1990 Yamaha Turbo Tour drum set. I uh, done up. I bought the best cymbals, some uh, percussion instruments with it. I also bought a, a D4 drum processor, spike triggers, transducers, everything. Wow. Plus extra drumsticks, extra skins. I was ready to go to battle. And wow. I did. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. I, I could do anything I wanted with that. Yeah. With the cases. That's amazing. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of people would have to go to the rehearsal studios to rely on their drum sets because they couldn't yeah. couldn't put a drum set together um, with enough you know money or things like that. So you had a huge leg up. I needed an edge. Yeah, yep. that was it. I had a real good cutting edge. Wow. Wow. Yep. So who, what, who were some of the first people you started playing with? Well, I was playing with my brothers first. They had okay. a couple of guitars. Yeah. We called ourselves Ice Nine, or they did. I see. But they gave up on it. We, I thought we were going to stay together, like the Jackson Five. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And uh, after that, uh, believe it or not, I was in this guy Randy Valton's band. I was only twelve, <laughs> and I was staying out. I actually sleeping over the house with the band. These guys are like five, six years older than me. They loved me because yeah. I went to school with the with one of the the bass player's sister, I see, Paula Zasky. I see. And she asked me, and I said, sure. Yeah. They loved me. I went yeah. to Times Square. I'm in Times Square in 1980 making demos. There used to be a studio there. Wow. It was a real rush. It was a rush. What kind of music were they playing? They sound Blues, like you know, wow. uh, wow. Ramblin' Man, yeah, sure. you know, like that. Yeah. And uh, I grew up listening to Creedence Clearwater, mm. Led Zepp, The Beatles, anything on the AM radio. Before sure. I played the drums. Sure. I would listen to the AM radio at night in my bed with a little radio. Yeah. Loving them songs. They were yeah. so listenable. Absolutely. And uh, that, that's pretty much how I tailor my drums, drumming. Sure. It's got to be listenable. That's it's right. got to have taste. The guy from Fleetwood Mac, instead of doing a drum fill, he'll just tap it a little bit before the chorus. That's it. It's just, yeah. he's a you know, natural great drummer yeah. like that. Yeah. He's not trying. He don't have to do anything. Not too much. And uh, I picked up on that. And, wow. Uh, stuck with me. Who, uh, aside, aside from just hearing it on the radio, were there members of your family that were also into that kind of music? My father, into? my father was like a, I don't know if the right word to use. If you told him you were going to fly a helicopter, you were going to fly that helicopter. I see. Uh, you know, I whatever see. you wanted to do, he was behind you. Just too much. I see. Just too much. <laughs> I, I didn't mind the two lessons a week. You know, some people in these bands, their parents are in, manage a country band. They know all these people. They yeah. get a real good break. Sort yeah. of like a spoon with a silver spoon in your mouth. That's right. But in the, in the music sense. Sure. And all these pros give them tips, and they know this, and they know that. And, you know... That's what happens to them, and it didn't happen to me that way. Yeah, uh, I really had to pull myself up, you That's know, right. from the bottom. You know, I got lucky. You know, I had a knack. Yeah, I had like a knack. I had a drive. Yeah, 
I was a hard worker. You know, there's more to uh, just playing. I mean, sure. you got to think, visualize, and do things. Sure. You know, you got to see things coming down the road. And I didn't see grunge coming down the road. That's I did right. not see, I did not see that coming. Sure. And if I did, uh, I wish I did before I, I met uh, Critical Mass. Yeah. Which happened one day. Yeah. I see. I see. So before we get to Critical Mass, um, were there other groups that you played with uh, mm -hmm. in the 80s uh, yeah. besides the, the blues uh, but, group you mentioned? Yeah, there were these guys after I bought the drum set. Yeah. And uh, the problem with them was two guys were working for the sanitation department. Now, oh, so I would play. Out. I just wanted to play. Yeah. You know, I just want to play. That's why I was in a Rush tribute band. These guys were great. It sounded great. I was really happy there, but it was a Rush tribute band. Sure. And uh, that's when I was in the studio rehearsing with them, that the, the guy in the studio, Doug DiMedio, he's an author, a Bronx author. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he uh, told me, hey, there's this uh, heavy metal band auditioning drums tomorrow. Uh -huh. And then there was another guy in there who was in wedding bands. He said, yeah, you know, make a lot of money in wedding bands, but when you hit with rock, yeah, you hit big. Huh. You know? But he didn't tell me the other half of the story. Yeah, when you when, don't hit. <laughs> when you don't hit, it's <laughs> time. Is it time wasted? In a sense. But yeah. I, I had so much fun. Yeah. I was having too much fun. I see. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still am. Yeah. Now, when you were, when, when you were um, at least in theory, at Lehman High School, uh, the years that, you know, you might have occasionally gotten to Lehman High School, which is the way a lot of people put it with their high school, um, were you... Uh, did you still have like the Sears drum kit, or you had another one? That no, I, I worked my way up to Rogers. To I see. So that's kid. before the Yamaha. So me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is nineteen seventy nine, eighty still. I see, I see, I see. Um, I, I had that, but when the parents got divorced, there was no drums. I hocked them at Bronin's, like everybody says in here. Uh -huh. Been to Bronin's, loved the place. Buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell. Got rid of it. Uh, I didn't need them. Yeah, I just didn't need. Sure, to. sure, sure. So you put them aside. For I, a while. Yeah, I had other problems than fighting sure, with sure, my sure. best friends, fighting over girls. It was sure. terrible. The sure. gun, the gunplay that you see today could have easily happened. Yeah. Easily yeah. happened. I know. I mean, I know. people don't sit down and really talk about it enough. But yeah, there, there was plenty of it back in the seventies and eighties too, and nineties. Even and like a kid like me, you know, twelve or thirteen, there was, there was like there was harsh fights. There was groups of Italian kids. Hating Irish kids, you, uh -huh. it was like just like the movie The Freaking Wanderers. I'm at Orchard right. Beach, you know. I, I see these these kids that you know we're not supposed to be on their side of the street. Yeah, it was it's just awful, terrible, uh, uh, being uh, uprooted like that and being thrown into the street. That's right. You know, when when you know you're not at home That's with right. the parents, you know, having a firm grip on you. Yeah, which a couple of these guys in the band had. Uh, I see. But, I see. Um, Everybody's different. That's right. But I can only speak for myself. That's right. And uh, it's sad that that happened, but it happened. That's right. Um, so which, which like, were you still in like the Throgsnack area when your parents broke up? Were you yeah. around? Yeah, yeah. Well, my mother had to go to her mother's. I see. And then I just couldn't stay with my father. You know, you're a little offset. If yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, sure, sir, sure, sir. Sure. And uh, he was offset. And so I, I, I went over there, you know, to my mother's. Every boy wants to be with his mother anyway, you know, you get that. Sure. The extra helping of mashed potatoes. That's right. You're not going to get it with this guy. That's you know, right. everything's a fucking boot in your ass. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So it didn't last long. You know, it didn't last long, but I managed to survive being a youth on the, in the Bronx wow. with, with the rough shit going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't fun. I know. It wasn't fun at all. So how, how did you... Um move out of that was it the truck, the truck driving she job? mom uh, got a job in connecticut okay okay and I that's see. where i started the construction and the driving ah, good see. stepfather yeah good stepfather okay I see. you know you get a job or you get out of the house i yeah. didn't like it yeah sure but i got a lot of uh, skills yeah you know with, sure with trucks sure and i worked and i drank beer yeah. with uh -huh. the guys uh -huh. and uh we worked yeah Wearing work boots every day with dirt. You know, I love it. That's right. I love it. Still yeah. thought about the drums, but once again, I could play that. I could play that. Why the hell bother? Uh 
Uh -huh. I can play that. Right? That's right. That's right. Why bother? Yeah. Um, so when you when you lost the truck driving job and you got the the drum kit, were you still in Connecticut at that, that point? That was the beginning of a lot of problems. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was living with, with my girlfriend. Oh, okay, okay. I uh, see. Where, where on and off, off, on and off, you know, yeah. shacked up. She was a funeral director. Oh, wow. okay. Wow, wow. <laughs> you know what it's like getting up in the middle of the night, take a piss in a funeral home? <laughs> probably not. I didn't really like really. it. I'll never forget it. <laughs> really, 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 really. Probably like some of this. <laughs> I got an imagination, too, and I'm like, you know, night of the living dead. I'm like, I couldn't get out from under that. Where, where, where in the Bronx did, was her place at? Bronx Neck. Gar oh, that's... Bronx Neck. Our relationship... Home on Tremont? Or no, that was in Connecticut. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. She, I see, I see. She I see, lived I see. there, but, you know, got kind it. of a coincidence. Got it. The relationship got destroyed by the, by the drumming, uh, the dreaming. Yeah. And, uh, and the partying. Sure, That sure. goes with that. It does, yeah. And, uh, but I, I had my course to take. Sure. And I was on course. That's right. I sure was. That's right. So I got far. I was in Warner Brothers Records. We, well, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, again, before we get to like the, the core of Critical Mass, um, you obviously had heard plenty of um, metal and all leading up. Yeah, that's another point. thing. What do you think? What What were your impressions of metal at the time? Like, were you very into Never it? Never heard of it. Okay, okay. Never, into Never it. heard of it. I remember seeing an Iron Maiden album cover in, in 1980. Yeah. I didn't like it. I thought it was silly. Yeah, sure. I thought it was silly. I was still listening to Zeppelin, uh -huh. Black Sabbath. I was kind of close-minded. Sure. I, 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 I missed all, all the songs that I like from the 80s. I know it's Puff, but I missed out on the whole... The whole thing, the yeah. whole eighties, the whole any damn song from the eighties. I was sure. working, and I was still listening to freaking what Zeppelin, ACDC. It's all great I stuff. never, I never opened up my mind. Sure, I never did. And it's not like it was easy to either. You had to go searching for a lot of that. You got to be too. exposed. Yeah, you, and I wasn't exposed. Yeah, I was hanging out with these old guys. Yeah, that's right. You know, right. these old mechanics. And probably some of them were like, what the hell are you listening to Led Zeppelin for anyway? Like, yeah, so. yeah, this other guy like Marshall Tucker, you yeah. know, and shit like that. Yeah, sure, uh, sure. Allman Brothers, which I like. Yeah, sure. Um, what happened was, I, as far as heavy metal goes, uh, Metallica, I, I didn't hear about Metallica until 1987. Yep, yep. 87. You know? That's right. Or or, uh, or any of these other f bands that are associated with them yeah. in any form. Sure. Um, uh, then uh, I, I listened to some Judas Priest at the wrong time, in the wrong place. I see. And I, I was, I really liked it. Yeah. I, 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 the, the imagery. Yeah. You know, with the leather jacket and everything, right. you know, and the spike, it was tough and he sang good and the guitars were good yeah. and the songs were interesting. Yeah, sure. And um, so I really got into Judas Priest, but I did listen to them in 1980 when uh, British Steel came out oh, sure, on the sure. corner with these punks I in see. Morris Park. Oh, wow. But you never think it's going to go anywhere. Oh, Judas Priest. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, living After Midnight. Yeah, it sounds good and everything. I, I never picked up on it. Sure. Because... I wanted to be a jazz drummer. Ah, you know, I liked I the drum solo. Because that's sure. what I had to do, drum solo. Sure. So it was all about that. Sure. It was all about doing a good drum solo. Yeah. You can do a good drum solo. You can play any song. Yeah. There's a difference when you attach yourself to music, you know. That's right. I was just by myself playing the drums. I was happy. Yeah. You know. What were some of the um, like most influential drummers like in your early development as a drummer during that uh, period? Okay. I really like John Densmore uh, from okay. The Doors. Yeah. Because of the coloring that he does. When I seen his drum set and I seen the array of cymbals, John Bonham didn't have it. Yeah. I didn't see many pictures. Buddy Rich didn't have it. Yeah, sure. That was like the first drum set I seen, drummer, who I actually liked to see the array of cymbals. And uh, he's a really good drummer. I really like John Densmore. Yeah. 
and uh, of course the Buddy Rich drum solos. Sure. You know that you've seen on the Tonight Show. Yeah. As I grew up, it's sad that his drum solos just stagnated. Yeah. It went through the same thing. It's sad. Sure. Sure. It really is sad. Sure. You know. Um, you know, John Bonham, all because it sounds good, you know. That's right. Uh, uh, that's it. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, you know, that's, that's a, a solid I line. air drummed to uh, Moving Pictures, you know, Rush. Sure, sure. I air drummed to that. I thought that was, that, that's a workout. Yeah. That guy's a freaking workout, you know what I mean? I was in a Rush tribute band. Yeah, hey, of course. I could yeah. talk. I could play all Rush songs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. you got to have chops to do yeah, that. Yeah, I'm glad I was listening to that. Yeah, that's right. You got to, right. yeah, you got to have something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Good memory. And so, again, just before we get to Critical Mass, um, I know you play blues. Obviously, you're playing jazz in school and on the, your own. The jazz mindset. I see. Um, it's more about the instrument. Sure. Yeah, the guy wants to play the, not the jazz music, so to say, jazz drumming. I see. I, I never see, I see. jazz drumming. I see. I see. Um, the art of getting around quick and doing things quick. And yeah. Just being fluid on the, on the set. Sure. You know? Sure. I see. So the more, art. More that than because I can. The art. It, it harder harder to play with an actual jazz because you have to have a whole ensemble and all that. But the mindset. Was yeah. Very yeah. The mindset. The the drum setup itself. I see. Only for a very short time did I want concert times. Yeah. Very, very short amount. Very, uh, like, a couple months. Sure. And I settled on the Ringo Starr setup. I could do anything on a four-piece drum set. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Besides, you're not pulling any drum set around that's bigger than that anywhere. That's right. Anyway. Sure that. <laughs> so you better get used to doing what you need to do. Yeah. On a four-piece. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so did you... I know you mentioned that uh, someone who played drums and inspired you to get into it. Um, John McNally. Did you stay in touch with John McNally? Yes, I did. Okay. He was an A&R person for uh, a record company in Manhattan. I yeah. gave him this thing. Oh. We all went down there, and he said, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know why he said that. Uh-huh. I don't know where it dropped off. Yeah. And nothing happened after that. I can't find a picture of him anywhere or anyhow, but I know he still goes to Louie and Ernie's Pizzeria okay. because I talked to the guy. So you see John McNally? Yeah, oh, yeah, he was here a couple weeks ago. Oh, wow. I'm on his tail. I'm on his tail. <laughs> you just got to show up to I, I'm on his tail. Right I took a couple <laughs> lessons from him, too. Wow, okay. He's a damn good. What a, what a feel. Wow. What a field he had. Did he, did he have, um, was he associated with like a music store or anything? He or? was associated with... Um, Blue Sapphire was a local band in Throxneck. Great guys oh. in there. Very t- You knew when you were in Throxneck who played the guitar. You, everybody knew everybody. Yes, it was a very sure. small kind of community. Sure. And these guys were good. People were good. I um, see. This what? guy, Fish, Joe Altieri. He's well known in the Bronx. Yeah. End to end, I'm surprised he's not in here somewhere. And uh, he was part of that. That click. Oh, I see. The blue sapphire. Click. Yeah. I see. Yeah, these what, guys. What they sound like. They um, played cover songs. I see. They sure. may have had originals. Yeah. But, you know, back then you really don't get around much. Sure, you know, sure. Even as a kid, they may have played out, but I wasn't old enough. Sure. But I seen them play in school, and I knew who they was. I see, I see. Do you remember any, um, you know, you might have been too young for this, really, but were there any, um, like, live music venues that you remember, like, in the Toronto yeah. area? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pelham Bay Park. Oh, Pelham Bay Park. Pelham Bay Park, there would be a big concert, uh, open air. uh, I don't even know if I'm saying the name of the band right. Uh, Rat Rat Race Choir. Rat Rat Race Choir. Rat Race Choir, okay. Played there one night. It was the biggest thing in the world. Everybody's Uh watching it. Some other bands were there. Uh, City Island had a place called uh, uh, The Viking. The Viking, okay. Is that like uh, a bar or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a club. I and see. I'm sure Anthrax played there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah. band Shire uh, was there. My brothers were roadies for them. That's how they wound up fiddling around with guitars. Yeah, yeah. So the, back then, yeah, there was a, a music thing sure. going on. Sure. And uh, I, I've heard a couple people mention, this might have been more like mid or late 80s, um, one of the bars on Tremont. i never gotten, you know, the straight name of it, but, you know, a couple people remember um, some hard rock 
you know, metal stuff going on. At in Frog's point. Neck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The port side? Maybe that's it. Maybe it was just it. a local bar. That, that was probably it. He had some bands there. Yeah. That's I, I played it. there. Uh, Only because yeah. uh, the guitar player knew the bartender. It was right up the I block. See. I see. Where, and, where, where is, is, is there a bar there now? That no, it's a there? Chinese restaurant. It's a Chinese restaurant. Okay. I love playing these little bars. You know, you get... Yeah. Drinks for free. That's right. Sometimes. Sometimes, right. So it depends on who's running, yeah. running things. The port side, okay. That's probably it then, because yeah. I can't imagine there were many bars. On really not set up for bands all the time, but hell, it brought in the people. Wow. It, you better have a freaking band. Yeah, yeah. Maybe down further or up. I don't know. I like see. you said, I was too young. But yeah. when I was playing... That still was the only place to play. Ah, uh, I see. I see and yeah, the train depot. I heard the some guy in here. Right, heard some right. guy in here talking about the train depot. That's right. That's I right. played there too. Oh, okay. The okay. freaking <laughs> small, small. <laughs> small. Some guy. Some guy did a write up on us there. I thought we played good. And he like chewed us out in, in the paper. Oh man. Uh, you yeah, know, I, I wish, I wish I could have stomached it. You know, but I really didn't stomach it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You know, sure. You know, made you try harder or whatever. Yeah, Maybe because yeah, yeah. we didn't have the four piece there. I see. Time. I'm not sure. I see. Hey, we could probably we could probably find that if it was in the Bronx Times Reporter because we actually have the whole run of the Bronx Times Reporter up to 2002, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh, uh, it's found... a very sad story. It's it's very sad what happened. You know the back and forth between his comments and our comments. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I, I see. Feel bad about it. Yeah yeah yeah. But key to the hey, moment. Yeah. And also, you know, you're the oldest of the bunch, and you're still in your early 20s. All the rest of them are. <laughs> you said, well, we could talk about yeah. that, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I had, they had their college educations to fall back on the whole time. Who the hell says no to a record deal? Who says no to a record, who says no to a record deal? They did. One that I know of. One that I know of. Wow. And um, who the hell says no? Some guy who's going to have a scholarship, who's got a scholarship, who's the smartest kid in the freaking school, valedictorian. Uh, that guy's going to say no because right. he's got, he ain't going to do, he ain't going to do this garbage. That's right. This garbage, man, forget about it. You, it's, it's a one in a million shot. Yeah. One in a million. I'll tell you, you get a million bands in this country, only one of them's going to come uh, out with money under their pillow. That's right. In the end. That's right. The rest will do it for years because they love it or because they keep thinking. The other guy became a federal judge. Wow. He was well on his way. Two only childs. Wow. So they had no bad habits to follow. I see. I see. And uh, I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't blame them. So you pair that with me having so much fun. Sure. uh, I don't think they could have tolerated it. I think (laughs) think they made the right decision. I'm happy right now. Yeah, that's right. I'm That's happy. Right. I still went on. That's right. So, so we're we're gonna, I think, elaborate a lot more on all of that. But let's let's get into the beginning of, of Critical Mass. That that very first audition. Yeah. Sure. Um, what the experience was like. Mm-hmm. Who was there? If it was, you know, all, all of the oh, members yeah. at that point. Yeah. Talk about that stuff. So the guy in the studio said, "There's a heavy metal band yeah. auditioning drummers tomorrow." Yeah. I'm on it. So, so I get there and uh, I, I see them. And there was another drummer who actually lived across the street from me who was oh, wow. auditioning too. Now, this guy doesn't need what's coming down the pipe. He plays the drums, all right, but he's a, an electrician. He freaking is making a lot of money. Uh-huh. The guy's a normal guy. Yeah. He, he ain't going to freaking bite the bone like I am. Yeah, sure. You know, I'm ready to. And uh, like I said, I had the equipment, so I, was, I could make a decision on anything. Right? Yeah. So... These guys, Rasconi, Levine, and Hurley, were there, and uh, they wanted to pl- play. Yeah, uh, Rasconi is the guitar player. Uh-huh. Levine sings. Uh-huh. Hurley's the bass player. Uh-huh. And they were there, and they wanted to do some cover songs. Do you know this? Do you know that? Yeah, I, I did know Seek and Destroy. Yeah, sure. I did know it. Yeah. How from hanging out with these other nuts. <laughs> And listening to it, it's sure. very easy to pick up on. Sure. sure, I knew the song, so I played it. Uh, they want to play Paranoid. That, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe something else. And then um, I, I heard the guitar player didn't want me. He wanted the other guy, which would have been a big mistake on his part. Because in three months, 
we had a solicitation deal from Hollywood Records. Wow. The drumsticks in 10, 12, in 12 years, I haven't even picked up a pair of drumsticks. In three months, wow. Hollywood Records. Okay. So now I'm flying high, right? Yeah. Thinking everything's going to be good. Yeah. Everything's going to be good. Should have acted quicker after that. Yeah. But it took a whole year and a couple of months to make to start doing an EP. That's just too I damn see. long. Why did it take that long? What I don't long? know. I, I making songs. I should have never played a cut. I should have walked out on them as soon as they want. You know how much time I wasted learning cover songs. I protested. Yeah, I sure. protested first, sure. but because I wanted to play. Yeah. I I gave in. Sure. You know, I would never do that today. Yeah. Time's short. I didn't know time was going to be short, but I should have never, ever learned Enter Sandman or, or any other dumb song that they wanted to play for people. You should have stayed in the, in the basement and did what we had to do, but that's not what happened. I but see. But we had fun and I played it, but it was, in hindsight, a big waste of time. Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> big waste of time. So... I wanted to play, even though uh, for <laughs> in these guys were good. Yeah, they were good. This guitar player was fantastic, and here's another. He's another one like me who didn't see it coming down the road. In the end, the last guitar song, the last song he gave me, I couldn't do anything with. There was no rock and roll to it. There was yeah. no rhythm like sure. some of the songs on here, like Eternally Cursed. Sure, it's a masterpiece. Yeah. From all points of view. Yeah. And uh, it just, these guys, what, you've got to make money. It's got to be listenable. You know, I ain't got time for this, man. I'm unemployed. Yeah, you sure. You know? Sure. I'm just playing the drums. Yeah. Drums, my skins are starting to wear out, man. Yeah. You know, we got to do something. And the singer is the manager of the band, which I trusted. The guy's law school. So far, so good. Everything was going good. He got us shows. Got his shows, and he sent out the tape. He knew where to mail things. He, nobody's perfect, you know? Sure, sure. Nobody's perfect. Sure. And uh, the wheels eventually came off. <laughs> <laughs> the, wheels, the wheels came off. The wheels but came not off. Before, not before a lot of hell was raised. I see. Not I before see. we got on the map. So what was the first show that you all played? It's it was remember. bad. It was bad. I, my girl I videotaped. I didn't even know what the hell was going on yeah. with these guys. Yeah. It was down in Manhattan. I don't know why you had to play this freaking show down yeah. on the Lower West Side by the West Side. Why the hell did you want to play that a week after I joined the band? A freaking oh, week. A week. Oh a week. A week. Wow. A week. What the hell's wrong with you? Wow. But eventually, eventually it got really tight. I see. I see. I see eventually I see. it got good. I see. See. Eventually, uh, yeah, it was there. It was uh, we won Battle of the Bands at the port side. Somebody says it was fixed, but that was a great show. Okay, okay, yeah. We were we were good there. I played Pelham Bay Park. You played. Pelham the Bay guy Park was too. smart. He got the permit. You can't get permits for heavy metal bands. About a year or so after that, with something that happened in Washington Square Park with people throwing bottles, they would not give a permit. We had the permit. Wow. It was right. It was right off the highway. It wasn't inside yeah. the park, but it's still part of Pelham Bay oh, Park. Wow. Okay, it's okay. that big one right by Pelham Bay Station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a tape of that around. Really? Yeah. Wow. The third reel. <laughs> the freaking guy. In the, I don't know why I gave. I, I think the, the girl I was with kept it. Got it back from him and kept it. I see. I see. I see. I think. I see. Hopefully she digitized. It. Hopefully, Hopefully right. she didn't throw it away. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, and I lost that. I had it. Wow. I had a lot of things. Wow. So, so what? What year was it that Critical Mass? Ninety two, June 92. of ninety two. I went okay. and met these guys. I see. So maybe ninety three is when that concert took place, or that. No, place. that summer we were. No, okay. Yeah, that's summer. Too. Oh my yep. god. Yeah, so that was a hot day. Running, Twenty songs in the sun. Oh my no god. No money was ever made. Wow. Wow. When yeah. we won Battle of the Bands, every I was supposed to get fifty dollars, and he yeah. said, "Oh no, it's got to go back in the band. We need it." And little did I know, he was buying the tickets. Pay to play. You have to pay the uh -huh. promoter to, uh -huh. to get a gig. That's right. I didn't want to freaking hear that. Yes, yeah, sure. I wanted that fifty bucks. Sure, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had nothing. 
Wow. But so, that's she was running the show kind of firmly. And yeah. that's fine. Yeah, sure. Well, I can't do I can't write like that. Yeah. I, I can't I can't. I, all I could do is hear a song and put drums to it. Sure. Where sure. it's likable. Sure. And you know, formidable enough. Yeah. So enough is enough. Were there um, were there other Bronx bands that you all would pay, play with on a regular basis? These guys hated everybody. I see. Uh, so. <laughs> they fucking hate. Don't want to know no band. Uh, the uh, the angst in them was incredible. <laughs> incredible. Yeah, yeah, and they got me doing that too, hating other bands. You yeah. know, they just yeah. wanted to step over and on everybody that they possibly could, and they had nothing nice to say about anybody. Wow. Except uh, you know. Their uh, idols, King Diamond, Merciful Fate. I see. That you was know? it, huh? Yeah. I see. Which I never heard of. Yeah, yeah. I sure. never heard of until I freaking met these guys. Yeah, sure. Did they, um, you know, dress the whole nope part or uh, anything like it, that? On stage, yeah. You yeah. know, the guy wore a cape, a big cross. Oh, shit. Yeah, I got to see it to believe <laughs> it. I'm yeah. sorry I, uh, I can't come up with anything. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's out there. Wow. Uh, the X Files. Okay. It's out it's there. Out Truth there. Is out. The shows are out there. Um, the other guy just, well, you know, the black bass player, no problems with him. Me, I, uh, I really enjoyed myself. Yeah. I found some stage wear from Long Island. Uh, called, uh, somewhere out in Long Island, I forget the name. And I had the nice lip service pants. Wow. You know, I had the. A stud belt, not studs, just some chrome. Yeah, some chrome. Um, very light. It, it, I used to go uh, sleeveless, you know, sure. with just the antique vest. In the end, I started wearing long sleeves. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's my trademark. Wow. Drawing with long sleeves. Wow, it's got to get hot. <laughs> Anything, you know, different. Yeah. yeah but I, I enjoyed that. I, I didn't see the point. Figured out how I would like to dress. Sure. And um, and I did. Yeah. I had a hell of a lot of fun doing it. And every day was a dress rehearsal for me because that's the only clothes I had. That's right. The yeah. stage clothes. Sure. These poor guys had to go to school. The yeah. poor bass player was a plumber. He had to go to work. Wow. Poor guy. He had to come over the bridge every day. I didn't. I didn't uh, oh, so he, he didn't live in the Bronx then, huh? No, he, he lived in Queens. Queens, I see. I didn't feel for him because, hell, I got my own problems. Yeah, I got to sure. freaking make these songs. I don't know what's going on in the background. I didn't know what was going on in the freaking background. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess they probably all knew each other for a little bit before. A they little tiny you, right? bit. Both of them worked together at Carvel. Oh. Uh, the bass player was looking for a cover band. I see. Uh, I see. I see. I see. I was I the see. last guy in there. We had, the band had a soul. Yeah. The band did. Yeah. Um, with, so with uh, the the two um, guitar players, uh, uh, where were they going to school at the time? Well, this guy, this guy, I sense was the uh, valedictorian. Yeah. The Lehman. Yeah. Then he wow. freaking went to Lehman College. I see. I see. I see. Uh, I see. So you got somebody around here that's associated with that. Yeah. And now he's. I, I don't want to give away his personal life. Sure, sure. But he's a big shot somewhere now. I he's see. He's a big shot in a big company. I see, I see, I see. You, you know? I see. Yeah. He's a genius when it comes to chemistry. Huh. Wow. And the other guy went to oh. uh, that college in Long Island uh, for law, or whatever it's I called. See. Not Hunter College, but something like that. I, I see, I see, I see. Oh, Hofstra. Yeah, 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 yeah this yeah, guy's yeah, in yeah, Hofstra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His freaking father's a lawyer. See? I, see, I don't know why they would even bother doing this. If you're not going to go all the way, why waste yeah. people's time? But for some yeah. strange reason, they were good. Yeah, it's just such a loss. Yeah, yeah. Um, so other than like, I don't know how they come up with these ideas? <laughs> other than like King Diamond and Merciful Fate, what are some of the other? Um, Bands that they were really into. The other guy uh, worshipped Metallica. Metallica. He, he liked Metallica. He liked Metallica. And they love Ozzy. They love I Ozzy. Now, I know all about yeah. Ozzy, too. Sure, know? sure, sure. But I stopped listening to him after Black Sabbath. When Blizzard of Oz came out, okay, wow, that is great. But like I said, for the 80s, I wasn't playing. And sure. I wasn't caring about sure. it. Sure. 
little did I know Ozzy put out all these albums that I got to listen to in the late 80s. Yeah. So I'm listening to Bark of the Moon, Diary of a Madman in 1989. Uh -huh. Like, it just came out yesterday. <laughs> yeah, 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 for you sure. Know? For sure. Wow. Um, and uh, would you all play in any of the clubs, like in Lower Westchester, like in Mount Vernon or yeah. New Rochelle, Yonkers? Played Marty's and Lenny's in New Rochelle. Yeah. Uh, then it closed down. Uh, Westchester, we're talking about. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We didn't, we didn't get out uh, up there much. Um, that's all I remember. Mainly New York City. Mainly New York Mainly City. Mainly Manhattan. That's where the promoter was. Sure, absolutely. So you name it, we played there. They would not play CBGBs. It's just not their venue. Sure, sure. Somehow, some way, never got into the limelight. I, I see. thought when I played there, that would be the end of the, the struggle. Yeah. Somehow, some way, I don't know what happened. I why see. we never got in there. But we played the Ritz, yeah. the Lamar's countless times. Sure. It was Spiral Junction. I, I can leave out a million names. The Bank. Sure. I was looking in the Aquarium. It's an old rag paper, music yeah. paper. And uh, a week before I played the Bank, Stone Temple Pilots was there. Wow. Boy, that would have been a show to go I to. I know. I and know. this is before anybody knew who the hell they was. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Be probably before they even had the term grunge that they were throwing around for yeah. a year. Yeah. Any... So we were getting wow. shows. We were playing. It was pay to play. We were out there. I see. And uh, having a lot of fun. Uh, at Queens, Long Island, yeah. the Continental out there. I see. I see. Uh, D. Snyder owns some kind of club out there. Yeah. Something else out there. Spit. I see. I Played see, there. I see. There's a video of that. I know there is. Yeah. The, the guy's son must have it because he told me he had it. I see. Wow. I just, oh, that was a good show. Wow. Who was that show with? Do you remember who else was no. on the bill? Okay, okay. But you all were tight yeah. and all that show, yeah. huh? Really tight. Wow. Um, we played with some local bands that are the only ones I could remember. Some of the names from the guys you have in here, I do remember seeing in the paper. Yeah. Fahrenheit, 451. Yeah, sure. Um, maybe somebody else. Um, there was a band out there called Judgment. I remember being on the list. All these bands that we played with at the Ritz are big now, Suffocation. I, don't, uh -huh. I would never, I looked them up. I'm like, I, I wouldn't listen to those. I don't know what the hell's going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just not my thing. Yeah, sure, sure. And they're out there ruling somehow, somewhere, somehow. I don't know if the guy's getting free drinks at the bar because <laughs> he's from freaking Suffocation. Yeah, I know, I know. <clears throat> I know, but who, who, who would have imagined that in the... In the early 90s. Yeah, who, who would have imagined if I only had my eyes open? Yeah. I was worried that they weren't going to make it there that night. Yeah. Uh, they got there so late because he used to put kids in the back of a truck. That's how we used to get the kids to shows. Oh, I because see. Because the, the guitar player went to high school, so all sure. these kids, these kids, <laughs> it was like a, like a farm. It was, they were very accessible, uh, and they were cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. I appreciated them. That's I wish uh, they kept in touch with me, some of them. Wow. Um, did you all ever, since they were still in high school, at least when it, start, when it started, did you all play any of, like, the Lehman talent shows or anything like that? It wouldn't have went over good. It's a, it, it's a, the singer's got a, as a front man, he, uh, he's ruthless. Yeah. To the audience, to, to, to everybody. You know, you don't even watch. It's it's very unique. <laughs> How you doing out there? How you feeling out there, you fucks? <laughs> you know, after you know, you know, we came here and kicked ass, and, and now I'm gonna go over there. We're just telling about the next show. Yeah. you know, things like that. I see, free, I see. I see. Free that speaking, kind of free speaking, but but good. I see. I see. I see. Um. Yeah. I enjoy Wow, wow. Um, do you remember, uh, like, what were some of the, uh, you know, most memorable shows that you played with Critical Mass? Memorable? For well, that Lamar anyway. show, when um, the, there's a lot going on. These kids, I don't think they were moshing. They were just having a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, they just, you know, get a little wild. Uh, something with the bouncer might have happened. We had to leave there now. Wow. We had to leave there now. There's a guy, his head's bleeding in the bathroom, oh, so we just yeah. stopped playing. I don't know if that's memorable. memorable. That's pretty uh, memorable, yeah. I just know that um, we would 
every show was good. It was yeah. never a fuck up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, anything that was videotaped and you could watch, you could remember and make it memorable. Uh -huh, uh -huh. If you ain't got a videotape, you're just talking about it. Yeah, that's right. What I remember. Do you remember, um, like, songs of Critical Mass that the audience, like, responded in particularly strong ways to on a, you know, like, from show to show? What are some of the most popular songs that you all had? Uh, we, we didn't have a signature song. I see, I see, I see. No. You just play your set, and every, yeah. every audience would respond in their own way to that yeah. set. I Memorable guess. show. Uh, yeah. A couple of guys came up to me. I can only speak for myself. They came up to me and said, wow. Yeah. I've uh, never seen anybody hit the drums that hard. Yeah. Three black guys come up to me. Yeah, sure. At um, Rocketeeria. Oh, at Rocketeeria. Okay, okay, okay. On Wednesday nights is rock. Yeah. From what I remember. Or yeah. Some other day of the week. Yeah. Uh, some guy at Pelham Bay Park wanted me to join his band. Um, they didn't like that. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, I remember a show with three people in the audience. Wow. Well, I think that it was at? a Monday night. Yeah, that's a hard night. You know, you remember that's those. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, odd. Yeah. Very odd. Uh, <laughs> Did you all ever play, um, like, outside of New York, like in Connecticut or Pennsylvania or New Hell Jersey? No, I wanted to. Yeah. If we ever left New York, it would we would be uh, definitely, I don't know why they didn't. Yeah. It would be like... Uh, shooting fish in a barrel yeah but we wouldn't have the fans that's right yeah, so yeah you yeah, would yeah, have yeah. to rely on a club that's packed with people that's and right. you know what there would be a lot of trouble because of the way he talked to the audience I see. some people it's like the blues brothers when they were in that country bar yeah, yeah. playing blues yeah that's the exact thing that could possibly happen uh -huh. with the chicken wire uh -huh. <laughs> that's what could happen when this guy gets rolling <laughs> did he ever have um any member or any people from the crowd like come up on stage and like get pissed off up? No, or anything like that? no, that we he surrounded himself with the fans. I see, I see, I see. Every <laughs> there was at least 25 kids there that were up in front of the stage. Uh, I see, that I were see, from I see. us. I they see, were our people, so they'd keep people back. Yeah, there was, yeah, yeah, basically that's what happened. <laughs> I see that now. I didn't see that before I came here. Wow, um, that he could do that because of that. Wow. And uh, did you have your Yamaha set throughout the whole time? Yes, I did. Them? I see. I yeah, see. I sure did. Yeah. yeah. And did you eventually, um, like, get another job uh, uh, to help you during this? Or? After, after the release of that, things we were waiting. We sent it out to record companies and waited. I'm like, any damn day now, any yep. damn day now. Of course, the party was starting to end. Yes. So, yeah, I, I had to go out and... And get jobs. I see, I see, I see. You know, <clears throat> Bronx Botanical Gardens, uh -huh. Bronx Zoo. Yeah. <laughs> Helping out some guy plumbing. I, I did get a job at a plumbing spot. Sure. It was terrible. It was awful. Yeah. Um, the drum set was a good one. We, we recorded that with Steve Young. That's the guy, Steve Young, in Long Island. Once again, this guy found this guy. I found out from a guy I know who runs a record company, Matt yeah. Preston. Yeah. Uh, Dystopian Dogs. Oh, okay, a record okay, company okay. in Michigan. Yeah. Uh, he's the guitar player for, uh, uh, I got it here on my phone. Um, this guy is the producer solely for Virgin Steel. Oh. Dungeon oh. Beast. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's his band. He plays the guitar oh, for wow. Dungeon Beast. Wow. Uh, I'm... Those guys could call me at any time. I'm yeah. actually affiliated with them. Yeah. So Steve Young, the guy who did this, is uh, the producer for Virgin Steel. He's got like 10 records out. They're big in Long Island. Wow. To work with a producer like that, yeah. he, there's some acoustic guitar work that's on one of the songs, Never Mind, yeah, sure, that sure. he said to put there. See? Oh, he said I to put see. there. And when he said, listen, guys, I know a great synthesizer player yeah. that'll come in and make this sound great. These fucking guys said no. They said no. Are you kidding me? Here I am, a little baby, not saying anything. I found out a lot from this guy. Yeah, sure. Uh, he told me, you know, it's the singer that runs the band. Yeah. They could do without you and him in the end. Scary situation. That is, yeah. One crossword, 
one bad personality trait. He, 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 you get a record deal. They, they don't want nobody else. All they care about is the singer. Yeah. That's all they care about. The singer. Wow. So I started kissing up to the guy. I see. Not kissing up, but... Yeah. Not rocking More the friendly, yeah. I yeah. couldn't possibly change, you know, who I am. Yeah, sure, sure. But I started paying more attention. I see. You know. I think the guitar player may, may have picked up on it. Yeah. But couldn't do anything without him either. Yeah, sure. Well, like Zeppelin couldn't go on without Bonham. Uh-huh. Believe it or not... If I had the lyrics, if I had the lyrics, and Rosconi was playing the guitar and I had Hurley, I could be the singer for Critic Hill Mass because I learned a lot from that guy. Yeah. But it would never happen because you need a drummer. Uh -huh. Only me. Uh-huh. I only trust myself with, sure. with, that, with that music. Sure. I'm sure I can. So it just could not never have happened. Wow. Um, so, so talk more about the making of this. I'm just going to show it. Obviously, there'll be... Um, this is part of our collections too, but uh, you can, you know, if you want to even start with the, the album um, artwork. artwork and then, you know, all the a recording. A lot process. of mystery. Yeah. A lot of mystery. The guy's mom drew that. Oh, really? I knew her a little bit. And uh, Alex very, mom, I guess. Yeah, Julia wow. Levine. Wow. And uh, it's great. It is a great and, cover. Uh, I heard she drew that, and uh, he found the damn producer in Long Island. Like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't have done it. Believe it or not, I think we wasted our sort of time with him because I found out record companies don't want something so damn good. Yeah. Just go in a room like they did in Nashville, play. I could have freaking played so many songs in there with these guys. Yeah. And give it to them. Yeah, and then it would have sounded good. It would have sounded good. like they want and all of that. I had the VCRs of yeah. the shows. I threw. I couldn't. I was torturing myself after yeah. I was out of the band, watching it. So I took a towel and I threw the towel over the TV with it on. Yeah. And it sounded great. It sounded like a live show. I, yeah. You know, it was clear. You could hear every drum, blind, bass, everything. You could hear it just fine. Yeah, sure. So we wasted our time and money with that. Um, took my whole uh, income tax return. I don't wow. know where else I got any other money. I think it cost more than four grand. Wow. I remember it's expensive. I said, Steve Young, the yeah. fucking producer, uh -huh. he ain't. He goes to L.A. And he produces real bands. I mean, if you ever look at his uh, resume, yeah. he worked with top people, at top record companies. Uh -huh. That's who produced that. Wow. I had no problem with him. Yeah, sure. He, me and him got along just fine. Yeah. The drum set itself, they ain't got to do nothing to it. Yeah. Let me hear you, Tom. Oh, well, I don't see anything wrong with that. Simple as that. Wow. You look fine with it. So you used your own drum set? For yeah. The recording. Yeah, yep. yeah. 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 Um, drum set. And how, how long did it take you all to record this? Do you remember? One day, days? one day I laid down the drum tracks on the bass line. Then, then I don't know what happened with the guitar. They, yeah, maybe sure. came back or did it that day. It was, um, and then, um, after all said and done, we came back and did the finishing touches. I remember the singer going, the singer doing it. I'm like, really? You're just going to stand there and do it like that? You know, he still had his coat on. It was the middle of the winter. But it sounds great. And he helped them with uh, staying in key. The other guy had to play some notes on the guitar. So I seen some really good see. stuff that i never seen before. Yeah. And then we, he did that. And then we added in uh, some of the things, the lightning sure. and the rain. Sure. And, and the thunder and the girl screaming yeah. is actually from the movie Jaws. Ah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 he yeah, has, yeah. Uh, the guy had that stuff. I see. And then that D4 processor. Yeah. He was, he wanted to use it. Sure. I had it, we plugged it in. We uh, changed some sounds on some things. We added, uh, I had all the percussion instruments in there, the, the yeah. bongos, the tambourine, all that's digital. Yeah. State of the art for, yeah. for 1992. For sure, for sure. Um, that was my cutting edge, and I, actually it enhanced that really good. And uh, when it came with another dumb move, we should have put it on CD. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We should have put it on CD, we freaking poor. Why yeah. we had cassettes, uh, the stupidest thing in the world. <laughs> the mistakes that you make down the line, sure. you, you see now. Sure. And we only had 500 of them. Uh, oh, no, 450. 50 were edited. Oh. He did editing. 
I see. Instead of making the beginning of the song go four times, yeah, sure. cut it down to two. I watched them cut the tape, splice wow. the tape, crunch it down to a quarter inch. I, I, I watched the whole thing, yeah. the editing. Wow. There's 50 edited of that out. Sounds great. Huh. It's out there. Wow. The truth is out there. <laughs> the truth is out there. So did you all get, um, you all did start getting a few little bites from sending this out eventually? As soon as soon as we were done recording, the bass player quit. Oh God. <laughs> Never knew why. Yeah. Never heard from him again. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was waiting to stick it to us. I don't know. Damn. I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah, you still don't know, huh? No, I still don't oh, know. Oh my god. I don't know. He fucking wow. quit. Wow. He quit. Wow. You know, another thing, nobody in the band had anything in common with each other. Yeah, that's what I it had nothing like. in especially the guitar player. Yeah. You know, a little brainiac like that. And you yeah. know my freaking background. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, these guys never did a hard day's work in their lives. Yeah, yeah. Make an ice cream cone in cargo. <laughs> I almost got decapitated by a freaking snowplow. I mean, uh-huh. Nothing in common, not even with uh, smoking, drinking, and, and other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't do that, huh? The singer smoked and drank. He yeah. was a lush, just yeah. like me. I yeah, don't know sure. if I was a lush back then. Yeah, I was. <laughs> 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 and uh, he uh, he liked to drink not not hard stuff, just beer. He really yeah, got sure. off on freaking six, seven beers. Yeah. And uh, the bass player... He lived in Queens. Yeah. He wasn't around, only for practice. There was none of this uh-huh. carousing that me and the singer used to do. I see. You know, we used to get together after band practice and go to a bar. Yeah, sure. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. We sure did. Yeah. And uh, I, I just loved shooting my mouth off. <laughs> I loved being part of that band. Yeah. Where would you all... Um, practice or rehearse at the singer's house in his basement. Ah, the singer, and he he lived in Throgsnack. Yeah, ah, I see, I see, I see, I see, yep. I see. With my PA, he uh, didn't even have a PA. Oh, okay, okay. No figure. And uh, would you keep your drum set there? You yeah, I kept my drum set back? there. I see. Kept it there. I see. How how often would you practice? Every day except Sunday when the guy had to watch football. Wow. And you know what? Nothing came of it in the end. Nothing yep. came of it. If I wanted to try something new, yeah. I did it live. So there was not uh, a see. damn thing you could say or do about it. I know it's a scary thing to do. Yeah, it sure. wasn't much. Yeah, sure, sure. One time, they uh, we do a lot of antics. One time, there was a lot of balloons, a lot of black balloons. <laughs> and they were kicked around, whatever, and we were playing a song, and somebody popped, or a balloon got popped, a couple of them, boom, boom. But it fit right in with the song. And I said, you know what? That's a perfect place for a fucking fill. <laughs> And I'm going to do it exactly. Strange things happen. Uh, and if I wanted to try something new, I, I did it live. I only made little tiny adjustments. I see. From the time the, the song is made. Yeah. Because the personality of, of the guitar player, he was not finicky. Uh, he um, you know, liked that stuff. I see. He, he wasn't, he wasn't exactly. available. See, he wrote the damn song, right? That's yeah. the guitar part. Yeah. Now, that's never going to change. Yeah. So I guess he doesn't like the freedom of other people changing. And things. We did discuss some things. Like I said, oh, I'll do it this way. He said, no. The other way you did it, it's good. I and see. he's right. I see. I see. But he was the primary one writing the songs. He wrote the good. What happened? Music anyway, I guess. The guitar player would put a song down on a cassette. The I cassette see. would go to the singer. Okay. And he does what he wants to do with that. Then he gives me the cassette. Yeah. Right after he makes the song, he sits down with the bass player and they, they go over it. It's all yeah. eighth notes anyway. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. That's and, right. For some reason. In there. And then I would get the cassette. Now I'm stuck with this cassette with the guitar on it. And I better put drums to that. And I got to listen to it. Yeah. For about a week or so. I see. And um, it worked out. Yeah. So I... In the end, you give me a freaking song. I'm like, what the hell are you going to do with this? <laughs> yeah. You know, we, you know, that was like the last song he gave you. One you of the last songs, yeah. Like, with, huh? I couldn't do anything with it. 
was it like changing the sound of the band a lot at that point? It was point? getting more, more complicated. His I guitar see. playing was be becoming more complicated. He was trying to prove something or something. I just couldn't find a way in the song. I, I see. Couldn't. I see, I see, I see. And, and if I can't do anything with it, if I can't play, I'll resign. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm sorry, guys. You're too much for me. Sure. And the bass player had already quit at that point anyway, I guess, right? Yeah, the bass player already quit. We went on as a three-piece, and we, you know how hard it is to find a bass player? Yeah. I was calling up bass teachers. Hey, you got a student that wants to be in a yeah. band? No luck, huh? No luck. Damn. It was, yeah. I know. It was the death. But at the same time, the, uh, the walls are closing in on us. Grunge, Seattle sound. Now it's time for them to go get their master's degree, PhD. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. fourth year of college. I yeah. have no idea how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walls were closing in. I didn't I see, see them. I see. I didn't see them. I was having too much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So did you all um, record <clears throat> anything after the massacre begins? They did. Okay, they did. They did. I left in 95, 6. Yeah. I heard from the internet and the other guy uh, in Michigan that uh, they put out something with a drum machine that I can't listen to. I see. Uh, never, never with drums, a drum, uh, a freaking drum machine in, in 98, fun. in 98. And it's, it's not, and then they changed their names. I uh, see. They changed the name I see. to something else. I see. I don't know why. Yeah. That's trademarked. Yeah. That. I see. That's another thing. They were critical mass. Yeah. And they were going to be sued by the band, Critical Mass. Ah. So the drummer at the time, forget his name, it'll come to me. He said, ah, call it Critical Mass. The guy is a lawyer that's trademarked. Nope, there is no, there's a Critical band out there. Yeah, sure, sure, but no Critical yeah, there's Mass. There's no Critical Mass, uh, I'm sure. Somebody, yeah. there's no way they could trademark that. Trademark. Yeah, that's right. Which is another good thing. That is another good thing. Um... So, oh, go ahead. The singer, I wound up find, stalking him. I stalked him on Lincoln. Yeah, sure, Lincoln, sure. Whatever it's called. He was happy to hear from me. Oh, good, good, Yeah, good. Mark, where you been? What do you mean, where have I been? You're a yeah, fucking lawyer. <laughs> you asked me if, if I wanted uh, this fucking famous guitar player. You could, we could buy him. We could give him $5,000. He'll, yeah. he'll put his guitar work down on yeah. It's Ozzy's guitar player. I forget his name. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. he yeah, can find yeah, anybody yeah. he wants. What do you mean, where have I been? <laughs> so we started hanging out a little bit, yeah. and nothing became of it. I see. He'd give me a song. I, I, nothing became of it. I guess he was too busy. He was, he was a lawyer. He's working for, uh, he's got his own thing going on. But that's what lawyers do. Yeah. He was a, a, a judge uh, in the Bronx for uh, workers' comp. Oh, it's okay. So okay, he's doing okay. that. Plus, he's helping people on the side. I see. That's what you've got a law degree. You could do that. Yeah, sure, sure. So he's a real busy guy. Yeah. He. Yeah. I see. He lived in Scarsdale. Oh, um, oh wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I hung out a few times. Thanksgiving, I stopped by. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, try to carry on. Yeah, sure. Carry on. Sure. Um, do you have any songs? Uh, from Critical Mass that were like your favorite to play or that you most enjoyed playing? They're not on there. Oh, okay, I like okay, that, yeah. the, the Burial of Sin in uh, Welcoming the Stranger. Okay. I loved that. I loved uh, the Ninth Level. Yeah. I, I just loved the Sickness in Disguise about alcoholism. Oh, wow. Uh, I loved them all. There yeah. was only a couple of songs that I felt, even to this day, I'm still trying to work out drum parts too, if you can believe it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I loved Unconscious. It's on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're all songs. So I just loved it. One time they said, all right, Mark, you pick the list. You can pick the set list. <laughs> I said, okay. And I picked all my favorite songs. That was the fucking show at Rocketeeria. It's video Oh, shit. Okay, okay. Man, I was tired I after that one. That was brutal. <laughs> that was brutal. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, one time. Yeah. I got to pick the songs. Wow. Um, so, as far as your years in critical mass goes, um, like, is there anything from, you know, the period when you're in critical mass, I'm sure there's probably a lot, but from your perspective now, like, that you 
you would have gone back and like tried to push more for, you know, gone differently. <coughs> that. Well, one thing that happened with the substance of the music. Yeah. Every day for me was Halloween. Yeah, sure. If you could see what's going on there. Yeah. And I think I had too much fun with it. I get that though. I mean, you know, listening to uh, Merciful Fate, um, The Devil, sure, God, uh, Hell, yeah, all these things, murder, yeah, all that's what all this is about. Yeah, sure. Jealousy, jealous rage, uh -huh. killing, uh, but in a, a medieval. Yeah. Romeo and Juliet uh, type deal. Uh, the imagery that you're seeing, uh, we, or I, both of us, me and that singer, we really enjoyed discussing those things. Sure. Um, I, I think I took it to heart uh, too much. Yeah. I, I did dabble right on the line, you know. I dance with the freaking devil, man. Sure, you sure. You know, I tell you right now, I sold my soul for rock and roll. Yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Even though I wanted to play jazz drums, but when I get into something, and I'm going to be the drummer for the band, I'm going to do my best. Yeah. I sold my soul for rock and roll. Sure. For that. Sure. And I'm just getting it back. Yeah. If, I, if you can get it back. Yeah. Sure. And uh, enjoyed it. Yeah. But what's not fun? Right. About being bad. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. right. Um, so what what led to um, to your decision to finally leave the band? I didn't. My okay. services were. Uh, I found out that it wasn't going to happen anymore. I actually finished the sentence for him. I you see. Know, we got, we're going to listen. We got to talk. I was like, yeah, I'm out of the band, right? I see. Because it was only a three piece there. It's fine. Yeah. It was sad. It was really sad I, because of the the time that was invested yeah. and the party being over. I thought I could ride this frickin' wave. Sure. I thought I was going to ride it all the way. Sure. And uh, I felt a lot of secrecy in the background. I I didn't know if they had, obviously they didn't have a record deal. Yeah, that's right. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't do anything after me. They yeah. didn't get a drummer. They didn't even stay critical mess, so they didn't even get a bass player, they right? They didn't do anything. Yeah. Wow. It never went on. I can't believe thirty two, thirty five songs. Gone. Yeah. Gone. Gone. Oh wow. So that's how many songs critical mess. Yeah, had. we had wow. like yeah, we had a lot of songs. Wow. Just goes to show you how much time was wasted. Yeah, sure. When, once you're up to eighteen, you should have had you should have sent it out, recorded it. You should have had something happening by then. Yeah. That's right. How do you make that many songs? And nothing's going on, but I, they did turn down one record deal. I, I, I know for a fact. Yeah. Um, after I left there, I, I just uh, joined other bands. I still, you know, had my chops. You know, sure. Everybody in every band's a fucking dick. <laughs> they really are that I learned. They'll never work hard enough. They're never good enough. They can't visualize. Yeah. All my eggs were in a basket. Yeah. All of them. Yep. And uh, can't trust anybody. That's the other thing. Yeah. You know? Yes. It's, it's a scary thing. I mean, it's hard. That's why when the singer is the, the bottom line, that's the common denominator for, for the record company. If you ain't good with the singer, you ain't good. Yep. You ain't good at all. You're uh -huh. nothing. You're nothing. You'd be gone in a split second. Mm. That's the way the business runs, Steve Young told me. Wow. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So what are some of the other bands that you played with after Critical Mass? I got mixed up with this guy. John Busick in Connecticut. Big talker, big talker. He ain't nobody. He can sing. He has a background. He was in a band in Florida. He got yeah. into some trouble. Like I said, I wanted to play. So, I like, maybe this, maybe that. It's all hope. Yeah. It's all hope. And, you know, maybe, you know, it's like when you're freaking at the slot machine. Sure. Yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to win. I know Someday. I'm going to win the jackpot. Yeah. I'm, that's why I'm here at the casino. I know I'm going to hit the jackpot. Yeah. You think you are, but yeah. you don't. 
him. We, we, he had a good guitar player in there. You, you think you're going to raise hell. But never like before it was going to happen. I, I played with him. I played with the cover band. You know, I had fun with the cover. I had fun with the cover band because yeah. I was with people and we got to drink. Yeah, that was a Rush cover band or another cover no, band? No, it was a, a regular old cover band that okay. did Tom Petty. I see, I see that kind so of So easy. Yeah, 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 so yeah, fucking easy, stuff. right? Yep. For me to fucking play with these guys yep. and make fucking $75. Yeah. And playing Tom Petty and some other shit. Yeah. Like a Beatles song. Sure, sure. But they were fun and they were good. Yeah. And, um... I went into the studio by myself and I did some drum solos. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, okay. I did that. That was fun. Yeah, I bet. Nobody telling me anything. Yeah, it was sure. Great. Just for the hell of it, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I did do things. I did things. Then I bought some vintage kits, you know, and then uh, resell. Yeah, sure. There's interest. Can't play them. And what the hell am I doing now? No drums. You, you need an electronic drum set now. You got to see the future. Yeah. And there's no drum set anymore. It's like it's a dying art. Yeah, I know. I know. Nobody's tuning. Nobody's holding a cymbal. Yeah. The way things are out there with uh, recycling and logistics. Yep. You know, try to get a drum head. No, it's. I could still play. Sure. No problem. Sure. Like I said, with those guys in Michigan. They ever needed me. The guy, if he ever needs drums, I'm here. Yeah. I still have the formula. Yeah. In my head for tasteful drumming. Sure. Whatever the damn song needs. Yeah. The greatest songs in the world have no drums in them. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yesterday by the Beatles, Time in a Bottle by Jim Crochet. Mm -hmm. Who the hell would know who the hell Kansas is if they didn't have... What's it called? Dust in the wind? Yep. Who the hell cares? They would be nobody. It's this song without the drums in it. <laughs> See, I know this. I know these things. Yeah, sure. So whenever I get a song, I'm really sympathetic to what the hell should be done. Yeah, sure. With that in mind. It's always in the back of my head. Sure. Yeah, you don't want to drown it out. With... Oh, you're going to ruin a song. Once, like I said, the greatest songs have no drums. Yeah. Once you add drums to it, it's never going to be the greatest song in the world. And it's coming from a drummer. Yeah, yeah it's never going to be the greatest song in the world. Never. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's the truth. So do you still have a kit? No, I got, I got the basics. Yeah, I got a yeah, drum yeah. key in my pocket. Yeah, sure. A, bass, a speed king in my trunk with my stick bag. I see, I see, yeah. I'm going to walk into any studio and work out stickings if I have to. Sure, sure. And that's what's needed. Yeah. No reason to have a drum set. It's yeah. Like there was no reason for me to play the drums in the 80s. Yeah. Sure. But if I did, it sure. would have to be the, a, a Roland electronic drum set. Sure. Way ahead of the game as soon as you get that. Sure. And you have to project yourself from behind an electric drum set. Yeah. You see a guy behind an electric drum set, it doesn't look too, too interesting, does it? No, it doesn't. You, it doesn't. But, if, but if your heart, if your heart and soul, rock and roll, Yep. you're going to project yourself out from behind that damn thing. It's yeah. gonna, you know what I mean? You have to. Yeah, that's I don't right. know if it's possible. I never did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's to be seen. Oh, yeah, you got to bring, I, I think, even more energy to an electronic. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Visual. Vis yeah, yeah. yeah. Visual you, better, you better do everything has to be turned up. Yeah. Your looks, yeah. your moves, what and what you're playing. Sure. It has to be turned up. Sure. As high as it can go. Sure. And then you could get through it. And then you can make that work. And yeah. if you could do that, you could do it. It's done. So, break. when you were in Critical Mass and after you left Critical Mass, did you ever really get very much into any of, like, the wider metal scene or anything like that? As far as just listening to it or going to concerts, that kind of thing? I, um... I watched. I watched it die. Pretty. Much. I watched it change. It, sure. I, it, it's changed. It's called metalcore now. Yeah. I can't. It's, it's like fucking trigonometry times algebra times <laughs> fucking twenty. I don't know what it is or how you guys do it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how to fucking know. do it. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't know how somebody could actually listen to something yeah. like that. So either I'm freaking too old, <laughs> or something's seriously wrong with everybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know. It sounds I, I have no idea. Now than, and than and I yeah. don't like the new stuff that's coming out from the old bands. Yeah. I don't know why Hatebreed, uh, the guy from Hatebreed, 
Breed would produce a Twisted Frickin' Sister album. When I heard, oh, New D. Snyder, let me hear it. Let me hear the fucking New D. Snyder. I didn't like it. It sounds stupid. Because the guy from Hate Breed yeah. frickin' producing it. Sure, sure. It's that, that sound. Yeah. That I don't like that structure. Yeah, sure. Uh, for some reason. Yeah, there's like the really, really deep and heavy and like almost machine gun sounding uh, yeah. drums oh, on everything. The growl, the yeah. structure of the song, yeah, yeah, the yeah, damn yeah. stupid guitar, the guy from Judas Priest. I, I can't take it. The yeah. new guy. Yeah. That, that, well, he's old now. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, whatever the hell his name is. I don't like it. What he's yeah. doing before. I don't need that introduction before. Yeah. It's just not what it was. Sure. And um, I, I don't, I, I listen to freaking the oldies, you know, AM radio. Uh-huh. I can't take, I'll take it as it comes. Sure. If I'm ever, like I said, if somebody wants me to play the drums for them, let me hear what you got. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. But, you know, well, whatever it might be. Sure. Um, and what about, uh, you mentioned in, you know, around Morris Park, hearing, um, you know, British Steel with some some punks. Now, you could have meant just, you know, punks as in, you know, street No, punks, kids, man. But, like, punk rock. No, no. Juvenile delinquents. Oh, okay, kids, okay, okay. You know, you know. Okay, because I was going to ask. Little ask, rascals. Yeah, man. sure, sure. That's what I thought. Yeah, you know, little rascals. But I was going to ask if you, if you ever encountered any, you know, people in the punk rock scene around the, the Bronx or anywhere mm -hmm. else, or if that, if that was ever on your radar. Never appealed to me. If yeah. you've seen some guy with colored hair coming down the streets or a long earring or something, or a nose ring, or even tattoos back then, it just didn't fit in. You'd yeah, have sure, to go sure. down to the village. Yeah, sure. That's right. Which would never was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we just had the dunkery jacket, uh -huh. dunkery pants, with Led Zeppelin on the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know? right. That's uh, right. And, uh, and those inside pockets, you know, where yeah. the pockets going on the side, you put your cigarettes sure. in there and your nickel bag in the other one. Sure, that's right, that's right. <laughs> um, uh, fucking knife. Yep. <laughs> and fucking go play by the railroad tracks, you know, cut school. Uh, the bands, the, these kids, well, like I said, one kid showed me an Iron Maiden thing. These, I heard Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden. First of all, the name sounds stupid. Yeah. Second of all, the artwork, I didn't pay any mind to it. Sure. The Judas Priest thing was just one night, a couple nights hanging out. Yeah. You know? It's a fucking staircase, a concrete staircase. Uh, it, but like I was talking before about the doors. Yeah. Now remember, it's 1979. The guy just died fucking eight years ago. Yeah, that's right. Doors, man. I doors. really like the doors. I don't think anything is, you know, just... Really good, really fun to listen to. It really. is, it is. It gets heavy, too. I mean, it is, yeah. Yeah, that's man. Right. You know? It is. Uh, Texas radio and a big beat, right? <laughs> Calling King Snake, you know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, the doors, I mean, really occupied my mind. Sure. You know, hanging out, listening to that. I mean, sure. I really couldn't pay any mind to anybody else. Sure. Back in the day. And then... Um, after Critical Mass, was it? Um, Rob Halford came out with Fight. I really enjoyed Fight, uh -huh. the first album. I really enjoyed that industrial map. He actually came out while I was in Critical Mass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was 1993. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But um, as far as the 2000s go, it's hard to fucking remember. Yeah, sure, sure. It is. Sure. You know, it's just hard to remember. Sure. Nothing special. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, is there anything else that you'd like to share about Critical Mass that we haven't touched on yet? I think we pretty much touched on the, the beginning and the enduring and the end. Yeah. Um, it carries a lot of clout, I, I think. You know what's there for what it is. It's not much. Yeah. That's it's not much of a sample. Yeah. It's sure. It's not much of a sample at I all. I mean, out of, of what 35, 38 songs, like this is just barely yeah. scraping the 38 surface. Thirty-eight minutes of music, and there's some yeah. bootlegs out there. Yeah. And uh, it was never meant to be. It was never meant to be. It was a choice I made. 
uh, to be in an original band, and I and I played rock star yeah. or up, up and coming rock star. Sure. Since, uh, uh, That's right. I, I was serious about playing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Made my own uh, way of playing, you know, with, with them. Yeah. You know, there was no practicing on my own. Sure. So everything I did was with a band. Yeah. The way I played. And you still get contacted to this day. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm one of the people who contact, yeah. but there's other people who contact you about Critical yeah. Master, right? Yeah. Like I said, once it went on the internet with the collectors and everything, um, people talk a little bit. Um, I In Greece, the, the tape that I bought, yeah. that I gave to the to the it's a historian like yourself yeah. in Michigan. I got from Germany. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. It's I was hoping when I happens. got it, it was the edited v version. Yeah, but I couldn't wasn't. wait to listen to it, but it wasn't. I see. I see. Uh, wow. So it's from the Bronx. Yeah, and it somehow it made its way across the world. Kind of spilled out, spilled out and over. And um, it's part of me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, sure. What's the name of that band? Metal Storm. Yeah. One of the guys from the Bronx band Metal Storm, and he knows some guys. He, I ran into him the other day, yeah. and uh, I know where he is. We, we, I can talk. I could still fucking get on the stump, yeah. you know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> about it, you know. But times have changed. Like I was just talking about the electronic drum set, and there's going to be no dabbling with the occult. Yeah. Anymore, yeah. You know, if I ever have to play again, yeah, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my God. Was uh, was that was that um something that was like primarily just lyrical content, or were there members of the band who were actually? Uh, I was interested. I was, I was interested in it, yeah. and I thought it came with the package. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I thought it came with the damn package. The last thing I was going to do was. I was going to and left to the show. I, I was <laughs> sure uh, you get hopped up. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, it's a part of the music. <laughs> <laughs> something would have, like I said, things could get out of control, yeah. and they were starting to get out of control with some of this shit because you can't contain it That's because right. there's 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 no outlet. Yeah, there's no outlet if you're not out there working, making money for it. That's Maybe right. my eyes would have opened if I made some money. Yeah, sure. And I would have said, okay, all right, this is serious. Well, sure. it's always been serious, but now now it's got to be done. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't even know what the hell I'm saying. But I, I don't know what I, I probably would have wound up dead. I, yeah. I'm glad things worked out. I'm glad the wheels fell off. Yeah. But thank God for freaking grunge. Yeah. It, was, uh, <laughs> it wasn't easy. And yeah. Well, because you, you see where some metal scenes went, like in, you know, Norway, uh, the black metal scene. Literally yeah, they get out of control. People murdering each other. Yeah, they're murdering each other. They're yeah. eating each other. One guy's got the piece of the guy's skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it would have. I don't think it would have ever come to that. Yeah. I, I don't think it would have. Yeah, sure. But it still <laughs> might have been dangerous. <laughs> there was other things, you know. You know, there's different. There's different things. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But that's what kind of heavy metal it was. That's right. It was the occult. Yeah, yeah. Merciful Fate and King Diamond in the background. I mean, that's, that's the vibe there. Um, it was cultish. Yeah. It was, well, you know, poor Dimebag Darrow, you know, the guy shot him because he was a paranoid schizophrenic. He thought he was stealing his songs and everything. Uh -huh. I had nothing to do with the cult. Gee, oh my God. It's terrible. I know. It's like know. a terrible. Have you ever heard what happened that night? That guy shot like freaking four people. I think it happened at the show. I know. Really terrible. There's other things. I don't know what would have, would have happened. Yeah. So, would you say with Critical Mass, was there anything um, that was at all like distinctively Bronx about the sound of Critical Mass, or you all just happened to be from the Bronx? We all just happened to be from the Bronx. Or except the bass player, I guess. Right? The attitude, yeah. yeah. We were New York attitude. Yeah, New York yeah, attitude. He's yeah. New York guy attitude. from Queens, guy from the Bronx. Absolutely. There really ain't much of a difference. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. I see. They, um, 
they were only childs, uh, those two guys. They didn't have – what they knew was at their level of learning. Yeah. They didn't have a big brother, you know, Yeah. that was into some shit that he's exposed to. He – these two guys are only exposed to this shit at their eye level. Yeah. See? Yeah. So uh, whatever it was, it didn't destroy them. Yeah. You know? Sure. They, they were able on. to complete their education. Yep. You know, yeah. Which is more important than uh, music. Sure. More important. I don't know how they, somebody could do two things like that, but they, they just think. Yeah. It. And to you, music was everything. Yeah. It was better than working. I know what work is. Yeah. And uh, playing the drums is a lot more fun and easier. <laughs> a lot more easy. For Especially sure. when you have drums that won't break and sound good. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like buying a brand new car. You're driving yeah, a lot. That's right. You're that's driving right. a lot before you have a problem. Yeah. That's what I did. Yeah. I was in it to win it. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I have a final question for you. Before I ask it, I just want to see if you want to add anything else, whether about Critical Mass or your, your musical journey in general or just your life that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, I'm not uh, homeless. Yeah. From from something like that. That's right. You know. That's right. That I managed to get a good job after I I lived to tell tell about it. That's right. I actually lived to tell about it. Yeah. The survivor. That's right. Well, one of them. The other two guys are too, but sure. I didn't give up. I didn't quit. Yeah. And neither of them had homelessness as a th an actual threat. Yeah, that would never happen, right? No. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, or uh, it messed up in some other way. Sure. Uh, I don't know. Playing the drums. Different than than uh, than writing songs. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, take it from a drumming point of view. Yeah. I'm glad I like the drums uh, as an instrument. Sure. I wasn't involved. I don't know what the hell's going on with them guys over in, in Norway. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just. I, don't, I, don't I wish I, I wish I could say more. No, no, this is good. About it, um, I think. Yeah, so the final question I have for you is, um, what does the Bronx represent to you? It's home. Yeah. It's my childhood, and uh, you can't get away from that. That's so right. you go to a certain part of town, memories come. There's worse places, and there's, sure, there's a better place. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I think you need a car. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You need a car, right? That's right. And most other driving places, a car yeah. has become such a pain in the ass lately. Yeah. You know, nobody respects anybody yeah. on the road. Yeah. The traffic. You can't find a good mechanic. Yeah. You know. But you, you live in the Bronx. Yeah, I got a car. I'm just holding on to it for a little while. Yeah. But um, it's not what it was. I don't know what it's going to be. Sure. You know? It's just a place. It's just a place. You know, you don't have to go too far to see the ocean. That's right. You know, there's big structures to look at, right? You know, uh -huh. That's right. Shit kicking, Bill. That's right. right. You know, all you right. see is a tree, right? That's you right. You see a bridge, you know, there's uh -huh. a lot of action. I don't, the action's brought to you by the news. Yeah, sure, sure, you know, sure. Crazy things you'll hear about that. I don't know what you're going to hear when you're in North Dakota. Yeah. When you put the news on. <laughs> Right? That's Farmer right. Smith's cow <laughs> went over freaking Miss freaking Violet's freaking door and knocked on it. Yeah, she gives him a carrot every day. Uh, that's right. That's right. Is it, is, it, is it time yet? I think it's getting close uh, for the eclipse. Well, thank you so much, Mark. I'm going to turn the recording off now. Really appreciate you sharing your story today. Okay, so just as a little uh, addition here at the end, we're looking at a photograph of Critical Mass. Yeah, that arrow by Alex's head. Okay, so this is the singer, right? 
Yeah, Alex Levine. Alex Levine. Yeah. And what? What? Do you remember what year? Ninety-two. This was ninety-two. Okay. Okay. October. So, so this dude's still in high school, and I guess probably probably all of them just are still in high out. school. No, just, he was at high school. Just out this of high guy, school. Rosconi up on the left. Ross is set, Seventeen in that picture. Wow. Okay. Okay. And the bass player. I'm twenty. In the middle there. Twenty-four. Alex. Twenty-two. I guess. Yeah. Something, something like, that. like that. Sean Hurley up there in the middle. Great uh -huh. stage presence and everything. Now, Jerry Landy, who owns the uh, movie theater in the Bronx, took that picture. He's a well-known guy in the Bronx. Uh -huh. so he, he would give you an earful in here. I don't know if about music or not. Sure, sure. Or something else. And uh, I never paid him. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, $50 with interest... Today's a thousand dollars. A thousand dollar photograph here. Yeah, I, I, I own. Um, um, he took that picture. Wow, and you can you can see the cape. Um, yeah, he's wearing the cape. That's a black one. Uh huh. He had a red one in the end. Wow. What would he do on stage as far as oh, like, like would, run around or? He would walk. He would talk. He would point. He would ad lib. <laughs> he would. Get the crowd going. Yeah. You know? I see, I see. Yeah. Would any of the other um, guys do things on stage? No, was no, they had a play. Yeah, sure, I sure, a, sure. I played. We yeah. all just played. It was, it was fucking great, man. Wow. It was so great. It was the love of my life. Wow. Yeah. Well, here we go. Thank, thank you for, uh, for talking a little bit about this photograph here.